Formula One teams so often attract controversial sponsors, from rich energy to tobacco sponsorships in disguise and funding from dubious backgrounds. In 2022, eight teams have been sponsored by cryptocurrency or blockchain organisations, and now that bubble has burst, how could it impact Formula One? Let's have a look. My name is Andy, and this is Behind the Drive. The first crypto influence in Formula One. The F1 grid used to be full of tobacco sponsorships. In the early 2000s, they were everywhere and a main source of income for the F1 teams until the industry was one that was not recommended for F1 sponsorship from 2006. This, of course, didn't stop some teams and the tobacco industry's influence on the sport has remained for many years since. But for the most part, the ban in the late 2000s brought an end to the income from the tobacco giants. You could argue that cryptocurrency is the new cash cow for F1 teams as they flock to the sport in their efforts to increase their brand awareness around the world. Formula One being a global sport makes it a hotbed for brands that want as many people to be familiar with them as possible. I believe the first crypto sponsorship in the sport came with Red Bull in 2019. Futuro Coin had a place on the Red Bull driver's race seats. It's worth noting that at the start of 2019, that coin was valued at almost six US dollars. By the end of 2019, it was worth just 5.6 cents. And today, that coin is worth just 0.00003 US dollars. So that's about three thousandths of a single cent, and a pretty dramatic fall over three years. Not only this, but the Red Bull website seems to have changed the published date of their announcement for the launch, with the site showing the date of the 3rd of March 2020. But in that same article, the drivers promoted with the announcement were clearly their original 2019 driver lineup. Perhaps the web page was modified following the conclusion of the sponsorship, which triggered a change in published date, but to me, something doesn't seem right here. Of course, it isn't on the F1 teams to ensure their sponsors remain profitable, but I think it's fair to say that when you have the advertising potential of these F1 teams and the amount of money that they're earning for these sponsorships, they should be doing their due diligence. Perhaps the Futuro coin disappointment should have been a sign for teams that they should be wary of this new industry entering the sport. And yet, three years on from that first interest in the sport, it's happened again. But this time, eight teams have sponsorship from an array of different crypto firms, and even Formula One themselves are sponsored by Crypto.com, who sponsor the sprint race events. The influence of cryptocurrencies is clear to see, and it's increased more and more each year. The Bybit sponsorship of Red Bull is reportedly worth $150 million over three years. The Crypto.com sponsorship of Formula One is reportedly worth $100 million over five years. And the OKX deal with McLaren is reportedly worth hundreds of millions of dollars. So crypto's influence in Formula One sponsorship has come a long way from the original sleeve position on the Red Bull overalls back in 2019. The questionable nature of the crypto industry. There are a few areas where the cryptocurrency industry doesn't necessarily align with Formula One, the first of which is in terms of their environmental goals. The crypto industry is notoriously bad for the environment. The coins tend to be mined, which is a process that consumes a significant amount of energy and also tends to use computer chips, so there's even more energy consumed in the production of those elements. Formula One, on the other hand, has a goal to be carbon neutral by 2030 and is taking steps to try and achieve this with circuits investing in renewable energy sources, reducing plastic and food waste at Grand Prix events, and then even the introduction of fully sustainable fuels by 2026. I have to say, these interventions feel a bit like a drop in the ocean compared to the huge environmental impact of the freight and transport to move the F1 circus around the world, and I expect much more will need to be done throughout the rest of this decade to achieve their ultimate goal. Crypto.com, the sponsor of the F1 sprint races, and Aston Martin has also got a carbon neutral goal, with a significant carbon offset plan. And actually, you could argue that this is very similar to Formula One themselves, but to attract sponsorship from an industry with a very poor reputation when it comes to sustainability does seem to be a conflict. I would add here, though, that the F1 partnership with Aramco is perhaps worse when it comes to environmental concerns. Personally, though, I think there's a broader concern around the cryptocurrency influence in Formula One. One of the main reasons for the tobacco industry being banned from the sport was because of the negative impact on consumers. The cryptocurrency market is still in the early phases, and the regulation of the industry differs from country to country. 
Like any investments, cryptocurrencies are very risky. And fundamentally, when a brand name is plastered on the side of an F1 car, it's very difficult to convey that message. This year, the cryptocurrency market bubble has burst and Formula One has not been immune to this. Last week, FTX, the crypto sponsor of Mercedes, filed for bankruptcy, when just earlier this year the firm had a valuation of $32 billion. The reason for the bankruptcy is because the firm failed to meet the demands of the customer withdrawals from the company and its liquidity dried up. There was an attempted sale of FTX, but Binance, the sponsor of Alpine, was unable to proceed after due diligence and realising just how much of a cash shortfall FTX reportedly has. As a result of this, many consumers and businesses could end up out of pocket, with the firm not regulated in the same way as other banks or financial institutions. And right now, at the time of recording, it isn't clear whether investors' assets are secured. The CEO tweeted that they would be safe, but subsequently deleted that claim a few days later. So in terms of what this means for Formula One, well, Mercedes have removed the FTX logo from their car as of the Sao Paulo Grand Prix. But there could be many people that have been influenced by the advertising on the Mercedes car that could be set to lose. Not only this, but the volatile nature of the cryptocurrency market means that there's been a wider knock-on effect of this large firm exiting the market. The value of investments across different firms has gone down. At Formula Netflix on Twitter posted a thread showing the value of each of the coins owned by these firms. They had each lost at least 77% of their value in the last 12 months, with many of them losing significantly more than that. Bybit, the sponsor of Red Bull, is actually an exchange rather than a coin itself, but perhaps that's a sign that they've learned from their 2019 deal with Futura coin. I'll leave a link to this thread in the description as it's an interesting read. So what we can see right now in this market is the fact that the products being promoted through Formula 1 teams have crashed and there will be direct impacts which affect consumers and fans of the sport. As we've seen with FTX, the industry is not heavily regulated, so is promoting it the best way forward for Formula 1. What can be done? Many Formula 1 teams have multi-year deals with crypto companies, but with their valuations dropping like a stone, you have to question whether these firms can realistically afford their sponsorships. For many teams, this is something that won't make too much of a difference. If Red Bull lost their $50 million per year sponsorship from Bybit, they would still reach the budget cap without even trying, and they, like many other teams, will have a queue of other sponsors knocking at their door, wanting their name on the fastest car in Formula 1. But then again, there are some teams that might be disproportionately impacted by the loss of a sponsor. The two teams without crypto sponsors would likely be the most vulnerable, so it's fortunate that Williams and Haas won't be impacted by this. But a team like Alfa Romeo, who've only reached the budget cap as a result of recent ownership changes, might struggle if they lose out on their sponsorship deal with Floki. So they might not be able to invest as much in the development of their car in 2023, should they lose that deal. Perhaps I'm being too pessimistic with this perspective. These cryptocurrencies may have the cash reserves to fund their way through the slump and come out of the other side with their F1 sponsorship intact. But right now, it feels like these firms could be very vulnerable. When Formula One last faced a financial crisis and a recession, many teams exited the sport and sponsorships disappeared very quickly. With the current influence of crypto companies in the sport, they could disappear in the same way at which point the FIA or Formula One won't need to step in as they did with tobacco sponsorships in the 2000s. I find it very difficult to support these types of sponsorships when there could be people that lose a significant amount of money as a result of investments they make because of Formula One's influence. Perhaps there should be more regulation regarding the way in which these companies promote themselves, but if you want to learn more about what happened when the last financial crisis hit and many teams left the sport, watch this video next.